Now, we was touching on the Shina Ike, Chinake, Chinake, which is usually said in the Igbo and the, you find in the Nollywood movies a lot. It's a Shina Ike. There's something very interesting about Shina Ike. We went through this before, but we felt that there was more to this that needed to be explicated and needed to be touched on. First of all, you probably are familiar with this, and if you're not, you should see the first part of this overstanding Nollywood, because we're using that as a segue into this particular teaching, which is contained in this book right here. We mentioned it before, Anaja, Anaja, Everybody's Root, by this brother right here, which combines the, the Hebrew, the Greek, the Latin words, English, all based on the Igbo or the Igbo, you understand, or the Hebrew, Igbo, Hebrew, all right, we had such on that right here, Igbo, Igbo, Hebrew, and you can do the etymology and the word sound and power on that, but we want to focus on this right here, the Shina Ike, now here's how we're going to dub this with the Bible, because it's very important to understand this, one will call this the serpent, this is the serpent in the garden. What about this particular serpent in the Ubim or in the garden that tempted Ivine or Haywan? You understand the serpent who tempted Haywan as well as Adim. Now Adim is interesting because in the Anaja, Adim is, the, is an I am principle, which is very important when we understand Christ and Christ being, as Christians will say, the second Adam. But let's focus on, like we said, the Shina Ike. You see, this is China. It seems to say China, the snake. We noted that many of those eight nations, or Asian nations, as we go to the east, have the serpent as a deified symbol. And also what comes out of this is also the yin and yang. Now, it might not be understandable at this particular point, but let's now go biblical. Let's add two things to this former um, chart right here, and we'll add one will be this right here, and you're probably familiar with this symbol right here. If you paint it in black over here, you have basically the, the yin and the yang, right? Some would say... It's the male and the female. Or some can even say it's the good and the evil. Basically, this is duality. This is duality. Now, remember, this is the serpent in the garden, which in the Igbo or the Igbo is called the Chinaike. Chinaike, Chinaike, Chinaike. And if you put it together, shnake, shnake, shnake. This is word, sound, and power now. Although some may say, well, this is just abstract. Well, of course, truth tends to be at its highest abstraction, abstract. But now let's go biblical. Let's add in this place right here, this place that was known as Shinar. Remember Shinar? Remember Shinar? Shinar. Remember Shinar? Shinar. Shinar Ike. Shinar. Snake. Remember this principle, positives and negatives. The positives and the negatives or the pharmaceuticals. You understand? Now, when we break that down in the Igbo, when we break that down in the Igbo, we find something very, very interesting. Let's go to the Igbo. Again, right here, we have the Shina Ike. As you can see this right here, you have the Shina Ike, right? And what does it say in the Igbo? It says right here, the English pronunciation or pronounced as snake, the God responsible for this world of positives, the plus, and negatives of rich and poor. Now, when we go to our metaphysical Bible dictionary, this particular book here. When we go to the Metaphysical Bible Dictionary and we go to look up Shinar. Remember the Tower of Babel? Remember this land that was called Shinar? It's 
found right here, Shina, right? Shina. What does it What does it read? It says Shina. Shina is two rivers, divided stream, wholly or completely severed, wholly cast off. Now, metaphysically, this means, and this relates to the divided, the divided mind, the divided mind. Overthrow of restraint, revolution. So this is a symbol also we have to understand a revolution. Do you remember the, the coup that they said took place in Ethiopia against the elect of God, the conquering line of the tribe of Judah? They called it, let's put it over here, they called it the creeping, it was known as the creeping coup. Now, what creeps? We know that a shina or a snake creeps. It's a creeping coup. But let's pay attention to this right here, this duality, the positives and negative, and let's go on with the meaning of shina, shina. Now, this will make the biblical link between the Igbo and our modern so-called English pronunciation of snake, as well as explain this, this primary of the elemental gods or the elementals, the elementals. And here we have the ancient name of Babylonia was Shinar, the country through which the rivers Tigris and Euphrates flow. It includes Babylon and the country round about with probably, they say, Mesopotamia. Mesopotamia, because that also has a divided meaning in its etymology, but not Assyria, not the Osar, not Assyria. Now, according to Genesis 10 and 10 and Daniel 1 and 2. Now, metaphysically, when we now break down the Shinar, which is biblical for the snake as well as for the Ebo or the Ebo, Shinar Ike, this basic principle you know what I'm saying, of positives and negatives, of the yin and the yang, the male and the female, the so-called good and evil. Are you getting this? The tree of the knowledge of good and evil, represented by this ancient symbol known as the snake today, in the Igbo, the china ike, and in the biblical as shinar. Metaphysically, this is a divided mind, a belief in two powers, returning to that elemental, returning to the so-called gods, which are really no gods, belief in two powers, evil as well as good, and the error results, the error results, the error results from belief in these two powers, you understand? Now, the basis of this word, Shina, is two. The basis of this Hebrew word that we find biblically as Shina is two. Duality, change, division, and separation. To this is united the idea of that which moves out of its place with violence and vehemence, a heated mind. Ardent passion, enmity, anxiety, terror. Now we have the link between the Igbo, Shinaike, Shinaike, the English pronunciation, Shinaike, snake, and the biblical Shinar based on the meaning. The meaning is this duality. This duality. This duality which now separates from the unity. Remember, the, the tree of the knowledge of what? Good and evil. The tree of the knowledge of duality. They ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. They ate of the tree of duality. They ate of the tree of yin and yang. And when they once were united, they became divided. You understand? They became divided. They became double-minded. You understand? Not believing in the so-called one God, but believing in gods or two powers. That the positive power and the negative power 
are two equal powers, which is the error thought. This is when the Bible says, when it mentions about, um, Hawari Apollo speaks about, I think in the book of Hebrews, how one's return to these elemental, to these weak and beggarly elements, returning to the weak and beggarly elements. You understand? This is what happened with Adam Na Hewan. This is also what happened with Ethiopia. Now, one can ask, why would the Almighty allow the Chinaike, the snake, you understand, full well knowing the influences of the snake to be that tempter in the garden? One could ask the same question about Imperial Ethiopia. How could His Imperial Majesty allow His his subjects, in other words, to be tested. Wow. They were given the command, but they had free will. The Almighty gave them free will. You understand? And in that free will, they chose to become double-minded, severed, you understand, cut off, cast off, overthrow of restraint, and ultimately revolution. But this revolution was against God. As it was in the beginning, so shall it be in the end. So this is the very important link now between Shina and the tower, the tower of so-called Babel or Babel, you understand, and the Chinaike, as well as with those Asian nations. And this is very important that China, we can see very clearly China is right at the heart of it. What does this have to do with today. It has much to do with today. You understand? It has very much to do with today. Now, this is not talking about a specific people. This is not talking about a specific so-called religion. It's talking about a specific state of mind. You understand? Whether the mind is in unity, that there's one God, you understand? The God and Father, our Lord and Savior, you understand? And the other is not a power. In itself, like the Kibber and the guest says of Satan or the devil, has no real power. All it has power, really, all it has ability to do is to cast thoughts into the minds of those whose minds are fertile for those thoughts based upon the principle of like attract like. You understand? Because in truth, there's not really a duality you understand, unless you eat of that tree. And humanity ate of that tree, of the positives and the negatives. The positives and the negatives. Because when man was created, he was already in the positive. Yes, there may have been negative, but that was outside of man. When man ate of this now, he ate now of this. He basically, this became fused with his mentality, but it was all based on disobedience. He was told not to eat of this. You understand, like when one says, do not become double-minded. Fear not. When the Lord says, fear not. Therefore, when a caduce fears, you understand, it's a violation. You understand, when the Almighty says, do this, and we don't do it, it's a violation. When he says, remember the Sabbath, and we don't remember it, we become forgetful, that's a violation right there. We open up ourselves to the other forces because of a direct disobedient, disobedience to the command. Now, this is, this is just to kind of complete this and also to bring it once again forward in the biblical way because we touched on this particular book here, and ones may say, well, what does that have to do with it? And say, well, that's very interesting, but it's not really correct or true. No, it is very correct. And it is very true. And when we touched on the acts of the Chinaike, we're speaking about what happened in the Garden of Eden with the snake. Now, what's interesting is the science now behind this. You understand the science behind this? And we need to touch on the Kirubim or the Cherubim, the Cherubim or the Kirubim, which was to guard, you understand, which was to guard to guard the garden, guard the way to the tree of life. This was not the tree of life. This was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. They did not eat of the tree of life. They ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Now, a cherubim was placed 
to do what? To guard the garden. Now, let's look up cherubim for a moment and see if this doves tails or if this connects. Now, we can touch about cherub, the kiru. Remember, the kiru is the singular form. The kiru, let's put that over here. The kiru or the cherub is the singular form. Then we have the cherubim which is the double form. So this is the first, and this is the second. Now, Cherub was a city, a Babylonian city. It was a place from which people returned to Palestine from the captivity, according to Ezra 5, 2, and 59. Ezra chapter 2, verse 59. Now, these persons who are mentioned as having come from Cherub or Cherub, with the returned Israelites, quote, could not show their father's houses and their seed, whether they were of Israel. Therefore, they were deemed polluted and put from the priesthood. In other words, those people who returned from a place, a Babylonian city named Cherub, could not show their father's houses or their seed, their race, whether they were of Israel. And it says, therefore, they were deemed polluted and put from the priesthood. Now, metaphysically, cherub, to see the connection with the Chinaike, the snake, and the garden, the Geneta Aden, we find that it's an aggregation of thoughts in consciousness that have been held in confusion. Now, the confusion is Babel. The confusion is Babylon, Babylon but are becoming free because of the seeds of truth thoughts. Now, the seed of truth thoughts are the Beta Israel, or the Israelites, that are working in them. They are still so tainted. They still, those who return from Kiru were so tainted. They were so tainted with Babylonianish thought, however, that they cannot take a place among our natural religious tendencies, which are representative of the priests and the Levites, in ministering to our true higher beliefs and ideals, which represents the Israelites. Now, the second is cherubim, the cherubim now, the cherubim, which means legion-like, augmentation, growth to infinity grass and held fast. Now, what's interesting is this, that it says of some say of Satan or Lucifer that he was the anointed cherub or cherub. But cherub, he was not the anointed cherubim. He was in the singular sense, just like this serpent here. You know the medical symbol? The med don't confuse this, the chinaike, with the medical symbol. See, the medical symbol has two serpents on it. The Kadaeus of the, even the Ethiopian priest has two serpents on it. The Chinaike has one, just like the cherub or the cherub is one. Now, you will notice in the relationship and the references, we can link Lucifer, you understand, know or Halal HaShachar with this cherub or cherub, the anointed cherub, you understand, which was said to be who mortals call Satan and Lucifer. But now the cherubim is distinguished. Even though the root is the same, cherub, cherubim, yad, mim, let's not confuse the two. One is singular, the other is plural. Now the plural here, you understand, which is the cherubim or the cherubim, here's the meaning. Symbolical figures that were used in the scriptures to represent the majesty and ruling power of God, also his attributes, according to Exodus, Exodus chapter 25, verses 18 to 22. Now, metaphysically, the cherubim of 1 Kings, chapter 8, verses 6 to 8, were symbolic figures representing the attributes and majesty of God. In 1 Kings chapter 8, verses 6 to 8, they stand for the unfettered truths of being, 
which must always be present in the Holy of Holies within us. In other words, they stand for the unfettered truths of being, of being, of existence, of the Haya, you understand, which is, which is the root of Yahweh, you understand, the Haya or life or beingness, which must always be present in the Holy of Holies that is within us. If we do not have this higher realization before us constantly, we shall drop down to the physical plane, and our religion or our spirituality will become a mere phenomenal display. We are told that the Kirubim spread their wings over the place of the ark and covered it and it stays, yet they were, quote, not seen without, and they, and there they are to this day, end quote. Here's a true description of the omnipresence of the principle of being, or I amness, in the whole or complete spiritual life of man. Now, at heart, we have this holy place. And these cherubim with their wings spread over the whole ark within I and I. No matter how great a backslider you or I or I and I may be, the presence of the Spirit of God is not far away from your conscious mind. Right under your heart you will find that there's a brain that in its depth treasures the memories, the memories of all religious or spiritual experiences engraved on the very substance of your being. And that very substance of your being is likened to the two tables or the two tablets of stone. Now the word cherubim or cherubim of Genesis chapter 3 verse 24 that was placed to guard the Geneta Aden or the Ubim, you understand the Kera Ubim or the Cherubim. And let's just show you that here. So do we have any space down here? We can show you according to the Ebo, it's the Chera and it's the Ubim. Now, if you notice, these are two words, and in the Ebo, this means to guard my garden. This means to guard my garden. You understand? So this is very interesting because now we're in Genesis 3 and 24. This means protection. Or it means a sacred or a caduce, a set-apart life, a sacred or a holy life. The inner spiritual life is protected from the outer course of consciousness. The inner spiritual life is protected from the outer or the course of consciousness, the, quote, flame of a sword, the flame of a sword. Remember, the cherubim has a flame of a sword. This is the divine idea. This is the word of God. This is the word of Ha Elohim. Man, humanity, unites with the inner word or the sacred or the Kedus Hewet through spiritual thought, meditation, and prayer. In other words, man, humanity, I and I and I, can unite with the inner and must unite with the inner word or the kiddus, the sacred life, the holy, the isla life, through spiritual thought, spiritual meditation, and spiritual prayer. The word is made manifest or is brought into manifestation when we conform in idea to the ideas of divine mind and set up the activity and set up or establish the activity of the Melakotawi Fekad or the divine will, which is perfect, perfect thought, fitum hasa, perfect thought and corresponds, and this corresponds now. This corresponds 
or the corresponding perfect action and corresponding you know, with the thought and the action. But it's important. So it begins spiritually. It begins with thought. See, a lot of folks think that in the spiritual life or to, to spiritualize himself, they must do physical things initially. No, they must do spiritual things. They must have spiritual thought. You understand? The spiritual thought, spiritual meditation, spiritual prayer. In other words, we, we now learn that first we must align and conform in idea, in our thought process, in our thinking process, to the ideas of the divine mind as revealed and manifested in principle in the scriptures, and then set up the activity set up the activity of our divine will to make our wills obedient to good influences and to avoid evil is to show the greatest wisdom is the teaching of the King of Kings, which is perfect thought and corresponding perfect action. The, quote, way of the tree of life is the narrow path. So when we hear about the way, the way of the tree of life, or the way even to the tree of life, this is the narrow path that's referred to by our black Lord Jesus Christ, by our black Lord Jesus Christ, Gitachin Jesus Christos. It is the way of unfolding divine consciousness by realizing the divine nature of man. See, now that sounds actually much easier than it's, it, it really is because, see, in this world, this world, the, the more you observe this world or this world system, it's trying to show that man, by his very nature, what Babylon is trying to show is that man, by his very nature, is evil. So when one thinks about man as being good, it's hard for man to even think that man's true nature is a divine nature. And therefore, it's a divine nature that resembles his divine creator. Instead, he is stuck. He is stuck on the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. He is stuck on the tree of duality. He is stuck on the tree of yin and yang. He is stuck on the tree of male and female, of good and evil, of duality, of the elementals, of thinking that the devil or Satan or Babylon or the white man is on the same level or even a higher level that evil is higher than good or that good is not really good and evil is not really evil. He is stuck in this duality. You know what I'm saying? He does not recognize good over evil, therefore signifying that good is the true power. You understand? Know and so what man must do is to reconform his way of thinking. This is why when we talk about the Senbel of the Shabbat, it says to remember the Shabbat, remember the Sabbath, remember. You understand? It, is a, it begins with a thought process. Then it expands to setting up the divine will, you understand, which is now perfecting, you understand, perfecting. Remember the teaching on the fit tomb, the tomb or the fit tomb, perfecting completely in its entirety. And this is very interesting because as we touch on discipleship, we're going to show now, based on that teaching that we've just taught, we're going to show the connection with discipleship. You understand that we have to understand that discipleship is based on this same sort of principle. You see, now discipleship is a term that's used to refer as well to a disciple's transformation from some other so-called worldview. In other words, from the elemental gods, you understand, this, good, this tree of good and evil sort of worldview, you understand, and practice of life, this world conformity practice of life, into that of our black Lord, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christus, Yeshua HaMoshiach. And so, by way of what's often called the Trinitarian theology, or the Seleucidus, Selassie theology 
of God himself. Now, when you note what a Hawari of Paulos' description, he described this very process, that the disciple, the Dek Mezmur, not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by what? The renewing of your minds, so that you may do what? You may discern. You see, what they lost was that discernment of what is truly the will of God. They became divided. You understand? And thus, later on, after the flood, they would seek to reestablish this, this duality, false elemental God's principle in the Tower of Babel because they came from the east, you understand, and founded a plain, you understand, a plain in the land of Shinar, the Chinaike. They sought to reestablish this. You understand? And this is a part of what leads us furthermore to what we know today as Babylon. You know what I'm saying? And that Babylonian, that confusion, because it's good and evil, a tree of good and evil, it leads to confusion. And that's what it has led to. But in order not to come out of that, we have to make note of the true process. And that process is the process of discipleship. And discipleship, as Hawari of Paulos describes it, is not to be conformed to this world, but to be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect, not what is good and evil, but what is good and acceptable, not what is acceptable and unacceptable, but what is good and acceptable and perfect, not what is good and acceptable and perfect and imperfect, but what is good and acceptable and perfect. Now, this teaching is found in Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Now, we have to note this. Even though we're touching on the beginning, we need to understand the beginning so we can understand where we're at as well as understand the end or the end of this world system. This, this symbolized the present world system. In a very simplicity right here, it symbolizes all of the complexity you understand know, that we look at what we just saw, New World Order, Babylon, and, and all that which is part of this confusion, this matrix of confusion. Because the disciple must not only be an accumulator or simply an accumulator of information. These teachings are not just to accumulate information. They're not. You understand? Know, or one who merely changes a moral behavior. A lot of people think it's about changing a particular moral behavior in regard to the teachings of Jesus Christ. But one must seek the, the more fundamental shift towards the ethics of our black Lord Jesus Christ in every way. This is what it means when it says, be ye perfect, all, completely, including a complete devotion to God, but it begins in your way of thinking. So see, the information and the understanding is important. It's very important, but it's not just to accumulate a bunch of random biblical information and facts. Now, there there's different Christian traditions of the process of becoming a disciple. Some call it the imitation of Christ. And this also goes back to the Pauline epistles. There's a book that's called The Imitation of Christ by Thomas O'Kempis, you understand, which further promoted this sort of idea or a concept. And what a lot of people even confuse about those teachings, because there's many important teachings in that, and the movie Passion of the Christ or, or, or The Last Temptation of Christ is a very interesting movie because it shows that it's not a poof sort of a thing, but it's a process of mind. It's, it's really a process of mind. It's a way of thinking. And at every point of the scripture, you will find that it begins spiritually. Where the religionists go wrong is they begin with a physical act. While true discipleship begins with a state of mind. And therefore, this is one of the main reasons why we sought to just complete this. Felt that this needed, we, we introduced this particular concept, but we needed to complete this, bring this to more fulfillment. You understand the chinaike, the snake, and then to link this with 
Shinar. And when we go into the meaning of Shinar, as in the land of Shinar, where they set up this tower to reach uh, up to heaven, you know what I'm saying, to, to reach up to heaven, the skyscraper, so, so to speak, a skyscraper of um, duality, a skyscraper of double-mindedness, a, a pillar and a tower to it, a, a point and a place of, of worship, you understand, that had to be brought down, you understand, that had to be abolished. So we have to really understand the link between uh, Shinar, once again, Shinar, which means two rivers, Shinar, which means divided stream, Shinar, which means wholly severed, Shinar, which means completely cast off, it means double-mindedness. Although it's a single cherub, you know, saying like the anointed cher cherub, this cherub is about duality or double-mindedness. It's a divided mind or overthrow of restraint and ultimately a, sim a, a symbolism, you understand, of that rebellion that was in heaven and now in the Ubin with Adim and Ivim, that rebellion against the Lord God, just like the creeping coup in Ethiopia was a rebellion against the elect of God, Kedamawi Haile Selassie. So, we will move forward from this teaching, but it's a very important teaching to do your own research on it and to make these significant links. You understand that we've been able to make this link from the Ebo or the African Hebrew, the Ebo, the Ebo, to also go into the Biblical Hebrew, you understand, the Shinar, so we have Chinaike, we have Shinar, and then in the modern English pronunciation, snake, you understand, to break down exactly what this serpent in the garden was all about, this duality. Remember, they were already created in positivity, you understand, they were already created in positivity. When the Chinaike said to Ivim, when you eat of this, the Lord God knows you will become as gods. You will become as the elemental gods, you understand, having or knowing both good and evil. Because the elementals, you understand, the elementals have that yin and that yang in it. But man, created in the image and after the likeness of God, if you look at your Bibles, a man was created, it said tov ma'od, or very good. But once eating of this tree now, something else was introduced. And this something else that was introduced was a thought. It was a thought. Remember Adam hiding? He says, um, I hid from you because I, I was naked. And he said, well, who told you that you was naked? You understand? He didn't even recognize that something told him now that he was naked, though he was naked before, and he wasn't ashamed. So whatever told him, you know what I'm saying, was the negative aspect that told him now that he was naked, though he was created, and he was naked already, but not ashamed. You know what I'm saying? This is all that byproduct, which very interestingly enough, in the, in the Anaja, everybody's roots, it says something very interesting, and we'll close on this part of the teaching, go to the Shinaike where it said um, how this brought about um, the Fahamasi Eliwadikasi, you know what I'm saying? It said that Adim, she gave some to Adim and he also ate it. As soon as they had eaten it, they were given Fahamasi Eliwadikasi or pharmaceuticals. What's pharmaceuticals? If you do an etymology on pharmaceuticals, what is pharmaceuticals? Pharmaceuticals is sorcery. Pha look it up for yourself. Pharmaceuticals is sorcery. You know what I'm saying? They were given sorcery and immediately realized that they were anaedeki, anaekadi, or anakaadi, that they were naked. You understand that they were seen natural. So what they do, they sold some, say, palm leaves. In the Ebo, it was palm leaves. 
You know what I'm saying? In some other traditions, it was fig leaves. But they sewed leaves together and made aprons, right? To do what? To cover themselves and cover what part of themselves? Their private parts. What told them that their private parts were shameful? Eating of this tree. You see what I'm saying? Eating of this tree now caused them to have a double mind, a double-mindedness. You know what I'm saying? And now this double-mindedness, this divided mind is really a belief in two powers, evil as well as good, or that evil and good are equal powers. And this is the error thought. You know what I'm saying? This is the error result. The basis of this word shina is two. The basis of this word shina is duality. Also means change. It means division as well as separation. To this is united the idea of that which moves out of its place. They were cast out of the Ubin or the Geneta Aden. You understand? With violence and vehemence, a heated mind, ardent passion, enmity. Remember enmity, that key word, that hatred? Enmity, anxiety, and the key word today, terror. You know what I'm saying? Terror. And we can add a new one today with terrorism. So this is a very important teaching. It's a foundational teaching to really understand in its proper context because we don't understand the first things that we can't really comprehend where we're at now or even understand the latter things. So my brothers and sisters and mothers, take this down. You understand there may be some areas where there's more questions about this you understand, as there should be, but this is the basic teaching on the Chinaike and that land, Shinar, you understand, and what both the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you understand, was all about, as well as giving us a foreview of Bible as well as Babylon.